Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and in this little video I'm going to show you PseudoWrite which is an AI writing tool built on top of GPT-3 which is a large language model but you don't need to know the technicalities just that it is essentially a big autocomplete and you can drive it to help you in different ways with your writing. So I'm going to show you a bit about what you can do with PseudoWrite and then I'm also going to talk a bit about the ethics of AI and labeling your work and checking for plagiarism and things like that towards the end. So I am an affiliate of PseudoWrite. I use it. I recommend it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. But if you would like to check it out, um, my affiliate link is thecreativepen.com forward slash PseudoWrite. Or of course, you can just go to pseudowrite.com. Right, let's get into the demo. So this is what the main pseudo write screen looks like when you come in and start a new document. Now it is software. It's also changing all the time. They introduce new functions. They also do test a number of different features. And if you click the little bubbling thing here, you can go into the lab and these are in progress. So I, I just turn everything on because I like playing with everything, but there's feedback and uh, I'm gonna, only going to show you a few things today, but you can always come in and have a look at new things. So they have feedback, they have a summarize function, they have expand, which is expanding a summary into a scene, which I think is really interesting. And they have a tweet storm. So that's turning everything on from the lab. So if you come in here and things aren't there, go into the lab and see what's what is available. But let's get into some of the functions. I'm just going to put a couple of lines. So this is a veteran assassin battered and bruised from a battle that would have killed a lesser warrior limped into the burning house. So that's a line. Now, what I think is really interesting, what I love to use PseudoWrite for, so I'm going to start with, is the describe function. So you highlight uh, a word or several words and then you click describe. PseudoWrite will generate these various things. So what I love about the description is it goes into the various senses. So here's some example of sight. The assassin had been stabbed, hacked, shot, burned, but he was alive. The assassin's wound was severe, etc. So this is a sight option. This is a smell. So, you know, wheezing lungfuls of smoke, he smelled his own burnt flesh. Sound, his breathing is shallow. Taste, his mouth tasted like blood and smoke. Touch, the floor was hot, his muscles are bunched and tense. And then metaphorical, which is always sometimes a little bit odd. <laughs> metaphorical here, she commanded the mothership, made and unmade groups of three. So I would say, yeah, I wouldn't uh, use that, but dressed to kill in the blood of both parents. That's quite a nice phrase. So what I like to do is just go through these things and have a look at stuff. Other metaphorical thing, he was so old that the light which he left in his wake was a broad and monkish glow. Um, yeah, so uh, different things here. He jumped in the air over the crumbling wall in perfect control. So what you can do is essentially look at these and decide if you want to use any of them. So I'm going to use the site because I think that's quite interesting and you just click it over there or you can copy and paste it. You can also provide feedback by saying yes, this is good or not. So I quite like that. I quite like the sound. And I also think the, the taste is quite interesting. So I'm just going to insert all of those things. So you can see that what that now does is it's essentially generated that text. Once you've got a certain amount of text, you can use uh, essentially the right tool, which is here. Now, I don't actually use this function at the moment as I record this, but it's got some really interesting options. So this is where it actually generates text for you. So if you click this, it essentially will give you some options. And again, this has changed since I last logged in. So uh, there are diff it, it will be different almost every time. It's, it's still in development as I record this. So first of all, you could do guided, follows your instructions. Let's do that. So you can see here it's changed to guided. It says, tell PseudoWrite what should come next. So let's these are some of the options that it comes up with, or I could write my own. So let's say the fire grows stronger and the assassin is engulfed in flames. If I click that, so what it will do there is it will generate a number of different versions. So the flames look at his skin, the fire grows stronger. 
The assassin tries to move forward, but his body is weak. Uh, that's quite similar, but this has actually continued. So the pain is unbearable. He doesn't give up. He crawls forward, uh, saving everyone, basically. Okay, so I'm going to take that over. And what you find is if you play with these different options, uh, so again, I can say, well, what's next? But here I could say the assassin's magic cloak bursts into magic fire. So I can give it a prompt and then click go. And in this case, it essentially says now the magic could help. So you can see how you can guide it. Let's try another option. So in this one, I've just told it to essentially autocomplete. And again, what it does is it comes up with a number of options. So then the assassin collapsed at the last victim. Uh, oh, basically he ends up as a skeleton. <laughs> so that's unfortunate, but you can see how it develops the story. Uh, this is interesting. It's picked something completely random. Uh, this is an example where I would think that, okay, that looks weird and completely out of context. So I would probably thumbs down on, on that one and say, yeah, that doesn't really fit. This one changes it to I, to first person, which is interesting. So if you want to write first person, it will continue in first person. So yeah, I think those are all interesting. Um, I'm going to take that one. So you I hope you can see that the text that it, it creates is based on what you write. One of the most important things to remember with these AI tools is that you don't just click a button and out pops a novel. It has to be based on what you have written. You have to direct it, which I think is really interesting. Okay, so you can also change the tone. Um, what you can also do is rewrite. So I'm gonna go to the rewrite button and with rewriting, you can rephrase it. You can say, make it more descriptive. You can uh, add more stuff. So let's, uh, if I do custom, rewrite to be in first person. So you can see here that it has rewritten it there to the I. Um, I had been stabbed, hacked, shot, burned, etc. So that's rewriting to be in first person. Um, I could say rewrite to be more horrific. And here's an example here. It's decided it's drenched in blood and gore from a battle that would have killed a lesser warrior. So you can see it will add things. It will try and do various things, but you can essentially use this rewrite tool to do various different things to text you already have. So let's just take the line and do an expansion. So if I again, highlight the line and click expand, what that's gonna do is essentially take what we already have highlighted and make it longer. So I think this is really interesting. If you're going with an outline, you could use this to go in new directions. Um, but yeah, essentially that has, uh, he suddenly found a, a woman, uh, who a girl who he's now rescuing. So yeah, you can see how this uh, goes on. So I could insert that and it would essentially, uh, that's expanded it. Then you can use the generating tweets, for example, and it will put your story into tweets. So you can just copy and paste those into um, Twitter, which I think is quite interesting. If you, I mean, maybe I, I wouldn't do that for fiction, but that's something that <laughs> some people might use. With the feedback tool, it's assessing what's going on. Um, the reader one says, this passage theme was that you should never give up no matter how bad things are and that good people can be betrayed by their own actions. Yeah, I'm, I don't really know what I would use that for. But again, it is, I mean, I particularly like the fatherhood motif. What I love about the AI stuff is it makes me laugh a lot. I end up laughing when I use this stuff and it just, um, there's there's always something kind of fun. I particularly like the, the metaphorical idea. Let's go to brainstorm. So this is more of a help with different ideas. Um, so let's go to characters. 
you essentially have to start driving it and here it is love interest for a protagonist who's just won the lottery it's a short story it's in boston and here are some options the cashier the bank teller and then you just you can add more so you can kind of half train it and then you can say start it's a kind of interactive idea where you can vote on what you like so for example i think the security officer is a good one so i'll put that over there the person who greets them at the raffle yeah maybe put that over there and it will just continue to generate things or you can click refresh and it will come up with more then there are other story tools you can generate twists you can generate more characters you can generate poetry but as i said coming back to what i like um, the main thing i really love is this describe option and to me this is the most useful area but because although I'm pretty good on sight and I, I write visually, I'm not very good on smell and I'm not so great on sound either. So I will come in here, use my own text and then look at some of the sensory details that might add a layer to my writing. So I hope you can see that it really does need you to drive the tool. You need to put the words in and then you can have a look at what it generates. And as I said, it will change over time. So um, it might look a bit different the next time you go in. So if you are using generated text in any form, then you should definitely use a plagiarism checker. And of course, you probably should use a plagiarism checker anyway. If you use research, if you're typing out notes, uh, you might accidentally plagiarize someone and none of us want to do that. So definitely use a plagiarism checker. I use Pro Writing Aid. Uh, I have a tutorial on that and my link is thecreativepen.com forward slash Pro Writing Aid. And uh, I'll also you can go to the tutorial Pro Writing Aid tutorial so that's a really good idea again whether you, or not you use generated text but certainly if you do use generated text you should use a plagiarism checker then of course there's the ethical and practical guidelines for using AI tools. Now the reality is that AI tools are everywhere. We all use Amazon for example, we use Google, we use Facebook or Meta. <laughs> we use, I mean we use autocomplete with Gmail for example, we use social media which has all these algorithms. So all of us already use AI, but the question is how much do you want to use the AI tools? So I worked with the Alliance of Independent Authors and we came up with a AI for Authors guide, practical and ethical guidelines. And one of our recommendations is, for example, that you label any work that you use AI tools with. So at the back of my book, Tomb of Relics, you'll see in my author's note that I include a statement of AI usage. And I just say, you know, I use um, Pro Writing Aid, I use Amazon, I use Facebook, I and I used PseudoWrite to generate descriptions, as I showed you earlier. Now, I, I haven't used the, um, the full text generation, but perhaps that's something I will do in the future. I know many authors who are using tools like this and who don't really know what they should do in terms of talking about it. So I think we need to have a standard which says, look, these tools are available, many people are using them, let's just declare it in the same way that we declare any other software. So that's just one of the guidelines, but the fact is whether or not you want to use AI tools, they are becoming much more common in the writing community. And whether it's an editing tool like Pro Writing Aid, where it's a research tool like Google, a publishing tool like Amazon, we all will use these types of tools over time. And I think the usage will only uh, increase over time. But I hope you can see that this needs help as in it's not just press a button and output a novel you have to start the process you have to curate the output and direct this in your creative vision and if you want to know any more I've been having conversations with people about AI about blockchain about web3 about VR AR about all these different things and you can find all the links at thecreativepen.com forward slash future where uh, I've linked to all the different resources as well as books that you can read and there's lots of stuff happening in this world and in my opinion we should join in and add our creative voices rather than just leaving it to the technical people
So if you'd like to try PseudoWrite, you can use my affiliate link, thecreativepen.com forward slash PseudoWrite, or just go to pseudowrite.com. There is a monthly charge, a small monthly charge, but of course you can have a few free days if you want to try it out. And as an affiliate, I will receive a percentage at no extra cost to you if you use my link, but of course you don't have to. So I hope you found that an interesting sort of introduction to PseudoWrite. And remember there are lots of these AI tech generation tools and many more to come. They're all built on top of these language models and they all work in a similar way in that you need to drive the tool itself. There are ones for nonfiction as well, um, but I think PseudoWrite is the most interesting one for fiction. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look at PseudoWrite and happy writing.